Medical experts are raising concerns right now after the Trump administration promoted claims that Tylenol use during pregnancy is linked to autism. The maker of Tylenol is also pushing back in a statement to CBS News, writing, quote, over a decade of rigorous research endorsed by leading medical professionals and global health regulators confirms that there is no credible evidence linking acetaminophen to autism. Dr. Owais Durrani is a board-certified emergency medicine physician, and he joins us now uh, to get into this uh, from Houston. Doctor, good morning. What was your first reaction to this clear announcement from the president? Good morning. Yeah, um, I feel like it's going to lead to a lot of unnecessary fear and confusion from my patients and patients all across the country, which is unfortunate. Um, it used to be when guidance came down from organizations like the FDA or the CDC or the White House, when it was related to health, it was something that we could rely on and comfortably communicate to our patients. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, a lot of the things that they said yesterday were simply bad science or even reckless at times. And unfortunately, I think we're in a place with healthcare in our country where it's already fragmented and it, this isn't going to do anything to make it better. And it's important to underscore the difference between opinions and something proven by science. Uh, will you continue to advise patients who are pregnant to take Tylenol? And what evidence do we have to prove that it's actually safe and there is no link to autism? Yeah, so I think the important take-home point is uh, understanding causality versus association. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things can be associated. For example, when you're pregnant, you may be drinking water and eating pizza. Uh, you could probably make a chart showing that, hey, that's somehow associated with some other conditions. Causality is actual proof. And so the studies that they were quoting yesterday, my, my first take-home point is there was no new study or no new information that they presented yesterday. They essentially looked at a bunch of older studies, which at times were poorly designed, at, that had some loose associations. Even they themselves said that there was no causality established. And so because of that, there is no new change in guidelines from any of my medical specialty organizations or ACOG, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. So obviously, it's a patient-to-patient -patient decision, but I will not be changing my practice in terms of who I recommend Tylenol to when it comes to pregnant patients. You know, any sitting president has a huge megaphone as well as devoted supporters, so there may be a high level of confusion now uh, from pregnant women about Tylenol use. What advice do you have for patients who are worried about what could be potential side effects? Yeah, so first advice would be, you know, like I kind of alluded to, we didn't get any new information yesterday or new studies. Second would be talk to your doctor, right? Your doctor has you in mind. They're not influenced by politics or anything else. And so talk to your doctor, ask them questions. We're here to help you navigate kind of these confusing times. And the third thing would be if we are going to talk about studies, we actually have a really good study from last year where it looked at, you know, it was a two decade long study, looked at millions of children in a sibling study. And it was essentially the same mom, two siblings during one pregnancy, they may have taken Tylenol during the other one, they didn't. And they looked at autism rates and there was no difference. And so that should be re reassuring to mothers saying, hey, continue to treat that fever and treat that pain because that in itself can be bad for the developing baby. Yeah, the best advice, talk to your doctor with any questions you have, which is why we speak to our doctor, Awais Durrani. Thanks for being with us. Appreciate your time. Thanks for having me.